Hi guys, welcome back to another Bourbon Santa video. Today we're doing, oh, oh, Old Forester, single barrel, barrel strength. This one was picked by, by Perdido Liquors and they are in um, Pensacola, Florida. This was from Warehouse One, Floor One. It's 135.6 proof. And um, the back of it is uh, has an amazing sticker and it's the Forbidden Forester. And it's got the forest go running through a scene from Harry Potter. <laughs> so it's a, it's an amazing, amazing label. And, um, and they did a little extra with a, a wax seal on it. So that's a Pensacola Bourbon Society kind of thing. They, they go all out with their wax seals up there. So cast strength, Old Forester, single barrel. Oh my gosh. You fill up my senses like a night in the forest. Oh my god. That is phenomenal. It's um it's spicy on the nose. It it might need a little bit of time in the glass. Or maybe it just needs to get dizzy because I'm getting a lot of alcohol on the nose. But I can tell there's a lot going on there and it's hiding behind a ton of alcohol with it being so high proof. Oh, that's better. Butterscotch. Uh, a citrus like lemon zest. Cashew. I'm also getting some kind of like, um, like a cupcake, but not like a cupcake, like, uh, like a gas station, super sweet cupcake, like a tasty cake, not even like a hostess, like the cheap gas station one, which is the best one. If you're fat, you know this, the gas station cupcakes are the best. There's a lot of really nice oak, really, really great wood influence on this whiskey. Oh my gosh. I don't know what the age is on this one. No idea. They didn't tell me before they sent it to me. This came to me from Perdido Liquors through the Pensacola Bourbon Society. They, um, they wanted to send me a bottle for me to taste and um, I told them that I'd, I'd do a review since they were sending it to me, since they were being so kind as to send it to me. And I so appreciate it, oh my gosh. I have, I can't get them. Nobody around here does an Old Forester store pick. There was one in recent memory and uh, there was a liquor store that did one down here. And I, the day it was released, happened to be on a weekend that I was out of town. And by Monday when I was back in town, it was already sold out and gone. So I completely missed getting any bottles of it. So super thankful because when it comes to Old Forester, I like the Whiskey Row products. Um, most specifically, I like the 1915, the blend of the 10 and the 20. That's my favorite of the Whiskey Row products. Other than that, my favorite Old Forester products are the single barrel, barrel strengths. Uh, I've had a lot of different samples, and they've every one of them that I've had has been amazing. So, and then I I do have to say that I like the the birthday bourbon. Are they worth how much they cost? No. Are they good? Yes. But this oh, this is phenomenal, and it keeps evolving. Like I'm getting like peanut butter and jelly on the nose now, like the breadiness, the peanut butter, the jelly, like really nice expensive jelly. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That goes past. <sighs> 
that was a shiver whiskey that turned into a, uh, a wiggle whiskey that turned into my soul left my body for a minute and then came back in. I don't even know. Like, I couldn't even give you notes on that. Strangely enough, I'm getting, after tasting it, I'm getting a lot more red fruit on the nose now that I wasn't really getting before. Like, it's like strawberry, but not as sweet. It, I'm not sure what that is. But it's definitely a red fruit. It's definitely sweet, but not super sweet. Wow. Almost, not raspberry, but like somewhere in between strawberry, cherry, and raspberry, like a weird amalgamation of different berries together. Wow, that's wicked. That is wicked. And the, the chocolatey brownie batter, hostess, or tasty cake is just raunchy. This has easily catapulted into one of the best bottles of, of bourbon that I have in my collection. Immediately. Immediately. This is catapulted right into the top 10, at least. Syrupy, buttery, super, super oily and viscous. The chocolate's hanging out. The wood spice is, is starting to react. The fruity, like the aftertaste, the feel of having eaten red grapes. The, a little hint of that um, citrus zest that I was talking about on the nose kind of shows up in the back of your sinuses after tasting it. Warm in the belly. It's dark and sweet and like molasses and honey just raining down. Oh, and then when you go back to the nose, it's changed again. It's oakier, but with like a, just a caramel drizzled all over the oak and chocolate, like chunks of dark chocolate. Gorgeous amount of rye spice hanging out in the textures. Oh. Oh my gosh. Rye spice showed up on the palate that time. Along with that honey and peanut butter and oh my gosh. It just keeps changing every time I sip it. And every time I go back to the nose, it's different. Wow. Wow. This is, this is the kind of whiskey that I go nuts for. A whiskey that keeps changing as you taste it. You can just sit with this for, you know, a half hour to an hour and just sip it and nose it and just go on an adventure. You know, some whiskeys stay the same. Start to finish, you know, in your, your tasting experience while you're sitting there, they just stay constant and, and consistent. And there's something to be said for that, you know, some people love that. But for me, as a flavor hound, as a just a whiskey nerd, a whiskey that keeps changing on me holds my attention so much harder than a whiskey that gives me the same four notes every sip, every smell. When it can keep changing and evolving like this, I'm just raptured. I'm sucked in. I'm there for it. Oh my gosh. Oh, it just keeps changing. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you ever see an old Forester barrel strength store pick, just freaking buy it. Just buy it and try it. It's not going to be a disappointment. Now, how much would I pay for this? Okay. Having tasted it, it's going to be a totally different number than having not tasted it. Having not tasted it, I would... I would definitely pay over $100 for an Old Forester barrel strength. I don't even know what retail is because I never see them. 
but I would easily pay over $100. For this bottle, I would pay close to $200. This competes with other bourbons that I have that cost me over at least $200. This competes with Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. This competes with... <laughs> This competes, competes with Jim Beam Distiller's Masterpiece, even though that's finished. And of course, Magnus is finished, but I'm thinking about cost-wise. Even without this being finished, this competes with very expensive finished bourbons. I might have to do a little blindy blind and, and see how it does against some of those. But yeah. Thanks, Perdido. Thanks, Pensacola Bourbon Society. Thank you for watching. Until next time, have a great day.